Despite the fact that it covers the majority of our planet's surface, we know remarkably little about the oceans. While we know how to navigate them and how to send boats from one continent to another, the surface of the water is usually a calm, safe place where all you expect to encounter are other humans and the occasional storm. What's below the surface is another story. Scientists estimate that we've only explored maybe 5% of the world's oceans and what lies in them. On top of that, they estimate that we've only encountered and cataloged 10% of marine life. That means that 95% of the ocean is unexplored and untouched by humans, and that 90% of the ocean species have never even been seen by humans. It makes you think, just what kind of stuff is down there? It could be anything. Even mundane ocean life can be deeply strange and bizarre. There are sharks that live for over 300 years, blind fish that only hunt by smell, jellyfish that are reborn whenever they die. If normal ocean life is this terrifying and explanation-defying, what kinds of anomalies could the oceans we swim and fish in be playing host to? One such anomaly is SCP-835. But before we get started, SCP-835 is an old, old file. It's one of the earliest in the Foundation's database, in fact. Like many of the Foundation's earliest documents, it's been heavily redacted and expunged, to the point where large blocks of the text are missing, not to mention the fact that it's been locked behind a content filter. But SCP-835 is unique not because it's been expunged and redacted, but because it's had them lifted. Versions of the file and its addendum that are cleared of the redactions have been declassified and released by order of 05-11 to all viewers. For some reason, whatever was so secret about this file no longer applies. But before we take a look at the declassified documentation, let's look at the old version to get an idea of what exactly we're dealing with here. The attached image for SCP-835 is, to put it simply, gross. It's what appears to be some kind of bone or muscular growth underwater, a bit like coral, but much more organic and flesh-like in shape. The growth is mostly white and brown, but large sections are grown over with what looks like some kind of black mold spores. It's large too, almost the size of a person's chest, and seems to continue out of frame. The caption is simply, Still image from recording 81. It's not even clear if this growth, whatever it is, is SCP-835 or not. Continuing on to the file, the object class is Keter, and the special containment procedures are lengthier than most articles and very detailed. They explain that SCP-835 must constantly be monitored and checked to see if it's growing or expanding. In the event that it becomes hostile to Foundation personnel, something known only as Suppression Tactic A-A6 is to be activated until it ceases any hostile action. The anomaly has to be contained in the open ocean rather than move to a water tank or such, because of the highly aggressive response of SCP-835 to confinement for any length of time. So whatever it is, it's alive. It's expanding and growing, and seems capable of knowing when it's being placed into containment and responding angrily. It's not only sentient, it's intelligent and aware. They go on to say that SCP-835's waste has to be immediately collected and contained, and that it is to be fed two times every day, though what exactly is going to be fed to it is redacted in this version of the file. It can also be moved to a new location up to two times a year, but only if the current location can't support it anymore, and if the move has been approved by the site directors. On top of that, personnel have to stay away from SCP-835, at least 15 feet. They also need to have safety harnesses attached to winches on the boat. If anyone so much as touches SCP-835, all of the winches will activate and rapidly yank all the divers back to the boat. From there, Suppression Tactic A-A6 is again instituted. But there is another line. If a staff member touches SCP-835 and is captured by it, then the anomaly is to be monitored around the clock until the subject has been released. Very ominous containment procedures. This predator, if it is a predator, has a penchant for consuming people and needs to be avoided at all costs. But if someone is caught, it releases them after a while. The description of the document clears some things up. SCP-835 is a mass of polyps, or tissue growths, that resemble coral. It's huge and heavy, though its full weight is again redacted. And the individual polyps are also huge, over a meter long, 
much longer than any known coral species. The central mass is oval and has a huge 3-meter-long polyp on each side of it, but can't move or budge because of its huge weight. Instead, it uses huge tentacles extending from the polyps to dig into the ground and anchor it in place against the ocean currents. These are the same tentacles that are used for feeding and are covered in a sticky glue-like adhesive. They're not just long and strong either. Tests have recorded them damaging stainless steel plating. And speaking of plating, SCP-835 is covered in it. Not steel, but some kind of organic coral that's much harder than steel and couldn't be broken by even diamond drill bits. All the Foundation could get were small samples. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Foundation's positive that SCP-835 is growing, like the containment procedure suggested, and it's growing fast, up to 50 pounds in a single day if it's left uninterrupted. But it can't be stopped. It reacts to certain chemicals that make it close up like an oyster and stop growing for 24 hours at a time. Based on that, the Foundation's been able to develop and use a chemical cocktail to force it to halt, the aforementioned Suppression Tactic A-A6. However, the results of testing it have been redacted. In case the anomaly wasn't disgusting enough, it also vomits. That's right. Every couple of hours, it expels a large mass of some liquidy sludge material from both sides, so to speak. After sample testing, the scientists realized it really is vomit. Well, part of it. The substance is mostly semi-digested food, fecal material, and semen, but also contains live samples of biohazardous viruses, bacteria, and parasites, some that the Foundation haven't even encountered before SCP-835. One of these bacteria, 835-I5 is a big problem for containing SCP-835, but exactly why that is, is unfortunately expunged from the file as well. Between the lethal witch's brew of dangerous diseases and the diamond hard shell that covers SCP-835's internal guts, it is nearly impossible to neutralize or even damage it. Even if you do crack the shell, the diseased fluid inside would leak out and infect you full of diseases in seconds. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, so SCP-835 is a really, really, really nasty customer. I mean, just by looks alone, it's easy to tell 835 is probably nothing to mess with. But a simple visual of the thing in your line of sight does no justice in showing how actually dangerous and disgusting it really is. If you try to break it, you get your immune system overrun by a cocktail of diseases. If it doesn't manage to eat you first. The document has one addendum. An after-action report by a member of Mobile Task Force Zeta-9, the notorious Mole Rats. The Mole Rats are one of the Foundation's most elite teams of special operation troops. Like all MTFs, they have a very specific specialization, one thing they do better than anyone else in the world. For Zeta-9, it's cramped spaces. The task force is highly trained in exploring dangerous constricted areas especially those that lie underground. From subterranean caves to endless staircases and basement labyrinths, the Mole Rats are the best of the best at getting in and getting out. The Mobile Task Force Zeta-9 had been performing an investigation on SCP-835, albeit when it was considerably smaller, only a meager four tons, and it hadn't formed a second big polyp yet. Just like usual, four members of the Mole Rats were chosen to begin the investigation, equipped with underwater isolation suits to ward off any biological threats. Lieutenant C, Sergeants L and M, and Corporal H, a rookie team member who was training with them and was ordered to only observe. They took a small underwater drone with them, one that would come in very handy. At first, SCP-835 didn't act hostile or aggressive towards the members of the team. In fact, it even allowed members to swim up to it and touch it without reacting. They couldn't even tell if it was alive or not. So they sent the drone to approach the huge polyp on the north side, while they went around to the small entrance on the other side of the rock. Corporal H was told to remain there and make sure that the power cable to the drone didn't break off or snap. Everything seemed calm. Suddenly, the drone's claw arm jerked back, having gotten stuck in something and began thrashing around. Not wanting to wake the creature, Corporal H moved forward and tried to free the claw, but then he became trapped too. The other members of the team heard him on the radio, screaming for them to come and help him, and that he'd been grabbed by some horrible tentacle thing that was dragging him towards the polyp that had opened up into a mouth. 
The incident left Lieutenant C a bit ruffled afterward. Jesus Christ, I can't do this! He was just a kid! It was his first mission, I should have kept my eye on him! After a moment, she composes herself and begins to explain what happened. The anomaly grabbed Corporal H, having fooled the rest of us. What we thought was the entrance to just some cave, while the polyp on the north side was the real entrance into SCP-835. The tentacles came out of its smaller polyps, grabbed Corporal H, and began dragging him in, while he thrashed around and screamed. The boat tried to pull in the winch, but from all the activity, the line snapped in two. Corporal H was pulled inside SCP-835 and eaten. The lieutenant explains that she swam over and hooked herself to his outstretched hand when the boat began winching her up. She said just as she assured him that they're going to be fine and that she's not letting go, her line snapped, and they were both suddenly pulled inside. She breaks for a moment, before describing the inside as like a wet, pulsing tube, like how intestines look on colonoscopies. They were both steadily being pulled in by the muscle contractions, what doctors call peristalsis, the way your body moves food down your throat and through your intestines. The only reason they weren't dissolved or crushed was because of the isolation suits they were wearing, but they still couldn't move. Corporal H had vomited in his suit, but they were both alive. The lieutenant, thinking fast, figured out that if they were moving through its body, they would come out on the other end in 72 hours. They had air and water in the suits, but little battery, and if the heat went out, they would freeze to death. She quickly killed all of the lights and power in both of their suits to the minimum, except the helmet lights so they could make sure that the other was still alive. The pair stayed like that for a whole day, with absolutely nothing but the creature's digestion and their own breathing. After a while, the corporal's face was visible. He looked tired and scared. She said that 13 hours in, the kids started talking and babbling. She calmed him down and they both slept for a bit, but were rudely awoken by falling into the stomach of the creature. They both fell out into a small chamber filled with liquid, and barely a moment later, their suits began to melt in the stomach acid. She yelled and they both ran for a hole in the wall, scp 835 sphincter. At this point, it was very clear that they made it into the intestine, and it was worse than the stomach. I'm sure you can imagine how horrifying it must have been to be in the mix of this creature's fecal waste. Disgusted and vomiting, the corporal and lieutenant picked each other up, knowing that they were making strides of this terrible ordeal. But they reached a dead stop. The creature's rectal hole was tightly shut, blocking their escape. They decided to wait, knowing that it would have to excrete eventually, and after an undetermined amount of time. I mean, any time spent in something's intestines waiting to be pooped out is too much time. The lieutenant was shot out into the sea, but without the corporal. She is obviously angry, telling the agents to do something expunged, before declaring she needs a drink and to sleep. What a horrifying story. But there are gaps. Let's take a look at the uncensored documentation for SCP-835. First, let's go back to the containment procedures. What SCP-835 is to be fed is explained, any kind of local fish, but higher level mammals if it goes into a rage state, including humans. In fact, it seems to calm down when digesting higher mammals. Maybe it's developed a taste for human flesh. In any case, the feeding should never happen without heavy supervision. Next, the results of performing tests on the samples of SCP-835 the Foundation was able to get. SCP-835 is no normal coral. It seems to be made from what can only be described as basic human biological components. The hard outer shell is super dense calcium, like your bones, but hundreds of times harder. The polyps are covered with the same kind of enamel that you'd find on your teeth, and the fleshy muscle that the tentacles are made of is mostly mutated tongue cells. The creature seems to have most of the biological systems we have, but they've all degraded or mutated into almost unrecognizability, except the digestive and reproductive systems, which are highly advanced. 835-I5, the bacteria unique to the anomaly, is explained. It's how SCP-835 reproduces. When vertebrates are infected with it, they will undergo a variety of symptoms, gaining huge amounts of weight despite always being hungry for things that normally can't be eaten, like wood and raw meat. Their skin will harden and form polyps across its surface. Their biological systems will slowly stop working and they'll become aggressive. And then they will drastically reduce in intelligence and motion, except for the desire to enter the sea. Sound familiar? That's right. Being infected by it turns the victim into another SCP-835 instance, with no way to cure it. 
And just like it seems, SCP-835 is still somewhat aware and intelligent. At one point, this thing was a normal human. Just in case that's not horrible enough, the after-action report has also been thoroughly declassified. Let's take another look to see the real full story of what happened to Lieutenant C and Corporal H inside SCP-835. The first reveals when Corporal H was being pulled into the polyp. He was screaming and crying, begging for help. Oh god, it's eating me! I, I don't want to die! Command tells Lieutenant C to abort the mission, but she refuses to leave one of her men behind, holding his hand while hooking them together. Then the line snapped, and they were pulled in. Just as they were escaping the stomach and right as she hit the sphincter, she realized the walls of the stomach were lined with human faces, screaming and wailing and begging to be killed. She pulled her weapon out and began firing into them, and she would have melted if Corporal H hadn't pushed her through. In the intestine, the corporal began to complain of a rancid smell. She checked and realized he had a breach in his suit, but quickly patched it. But it was too late. She looked at his face, and it was growing pustules already. They burst, spraying blood, and he begged to be put out of his misery. But when the lieutenant shot her gun at him, all it produced were empty clicks. She had wasted all the ammo on the crying stomach faces. Suddenly, tentacles burst through the corporal's faceplate and simultaneously pinned the lieutenant down. She managed to flip what had been the corporal over and wrestle with what was left of him before the sphincter into the stomach, where his body began to melt in the acid. But before it did, she saw the corporal's face smiling and said he loved her before he died. Then she felt a burst of energy and was shot through the exit. With a troubled gleam in her eyes, she stands there telling her story to the agent. She takes a second to gain some strength and then says, I didn't make it out intact. My suit was breached, and I didn't even realize until I took it off and saw the rash on my skin. Realizing she's going to die, she suddenly puts the room she's in on lockdown and orders the debriefing agent to evacuate everyone else aboard immediately. Just before she kills the feed, she makes one request, that the Foundation not try to decontaminate the small boat, just to abandon ship and scuttle it on top of SCP-835, on top of the Corporal. That way, they can be together in some kind of sick resting place. SCP-835 is the horrible tale of things that can go wrong at the Foundation, and two people doing their best in a brutal situation. But with the modern containment protocols and ensuring people know what happened to the pair, the Foundation can ensure no one ends up like the Lieutenant and the Corporal again. Now go watch SCP-3000 Anatashisha and SCP-057-IT Under the Sea for more SCP Explained videos about mysterious anomalies that can be found lurking beneath the waves. Surf's up.